If there's one thing you guys love video wise, oh, I remember this for, anyway, sorry. Uh, it's possessed PCs. So this is a PC that actually belongs to a friend of a friend. And basically I, this is now calling in a lifeline because he tried everything he could to see if he could get it working. And uh, now we're gonna see if we can get it working. Now, it doesn't really matter if we get it working because he's gonna upgrade their PC anyway, but we wanna know what went wrong. So let's see if we can figure it out. And that's just gonna be by throwing parts at it because we have lots of parts. Meet the Athena M4M from Gamdias, a compact micro tower built for gamers, creators, and anyone who wants big performance in a small footprint. Right out of the box, the Athena M4M makes a statement with its mesh front panel, a sleek RGB light strip, and three pre-installed Notice M1 fans, all tied together with an eight port fan hub and a PSU extension cable, making it for an easier build. The build quality is rock solid. Modular detachable panels with clasps and thumb screws make every section easy to access, and its minimal design fits perfectly into modern setups without taking over your desk. But airflow is where the M4M really shines. You get a perforated mesh front, side and top dust filters, and a front mounted PSU layout that keeps cables out of your cooling path, and pair that with the BTF motherboard support, your build looks clean from every angle. For cooling power, the included Notice fans deliver smooth, quiet airflow, and the case supports up to nine fans total. And yes, the compact tower handles dual 360 millimeter radiators, top and bottom, giving you water cooling potential, normally reserved for much larger cases. And despite its small size, compatibility is huge. GPUs up to 395 millimeters in length, MATX motherboards, and PSUs up to 150 millimeters, the Athena M4M gives you the flexibility of a full tower and a footprint that fits anywhere. The Athena M4M, small case, massive potential. So this is the 11th gen, it's 11700K with a Maximus Hero uh, 13 board. And I think the NVMe, did you, take the, did you take the NVMe out? Okay, so there's no NVMe, but we'll put that in later to the new board. Um, it's also got a MSI 3080 Ti Lightning, um, right? Lightning is what they call it, whatever. Oh no, Trio, Gaming X Trio. And what's been happening is apparently the PC was overheating at some point and the person who this PC belongs to isn't, isn't very tech literate or savvy and then just kind of kept restarting the PC and letting it run or whatever. Was it an AIO? Yeah, so the AIO, AIO was probably failing. I don't, I don't think there was any damage caused by that because the CPU will just continue to shut itself off at, at thermal protection limit. Like you could, it could do that all day long technically and probably not have a problem. But uh, what they're getting now is a, what looks like a post, it, all the lights and everything turn on, but no image. So what's been tested is seeing whether or not, it's not an S, right? No, seeing whether or not they got an image out of here, no image out of the motherboard with the GPU removed. GPU is probably not the problem. I can always test the GPU on one of our other test benches, but I'm gonna start this up now just in its own config so we can see what is happening here. So let's just, if it works here, I. It wouldn't surprise me. It's happened before where things, even for in this own, this own building, like my PC upstairs would do weird things and I'd bring it down here to test it and it wouldn't do those things down here, but it would do those things up there. Go make sense out of that. So Intel, when it memory trains is a lot different than AMD. It does a lot of rebooting, a lot of recycling, whereas AMD will just sit on code 15. This will go round and round and round. So, want to grab that power supply? Because it's working here. Glad to see that the tradition of things working here but not where they belong is still alive. These are also both type four connector power supplies so I can switch these cables out without worrying about damaging anything. Even with the, uh, the letter prefix being different? Yes, because they're type four connectors. That's the nice thing about Corsair is they, they label their connector type by type, not by series of yep. power supply. And everything's been type four, except for the shift power supply, which is type five, since I started YouTube. You guys should still double check though. <laughs> yeah, don't take my word for it. Yeah, yeah I think one more, re one more repo or reboot right now. It's gonna go green, yep, there it is. Everything's working fine. Cool. It's quite possible something over time might have gotten, some of the older Corsair cases had some sharp edges. And we've had builds that wouldn't post sent to us by certain SIs that uh, they would pull the cable management so tight that cable shielding, like the the wire, because you know the the peripherals are just exposed. They don't have this like sleeving on it, so they would get pulled tight on the edge of a, a metal piece. And over time, even without it moving, just 
temperature fluctuation and changes, we would have it like make contact and then ground out. And then what would happen is the system wouldn't post. Uh, we've had that happen before. So now you gotta decide what you wanna do. This is, this is, the, <laughs> this is the worst part about PC diagnosis is when everything works. I guess let me hook these cables up and see. Because what I would want to look for is just maybe if any of the pins look like they're kind of pulling out of the, of the 24 pin or something like that. Here, I'll switch these cables out to the white cables and see if anything different happens. So we've got all the cables switched out to their original cables. I have a feeling this is going to do nothing out of the ordinary personally. Only because I've watched this movie before and I've seen how it ends. Yep, there's green, there's blue, and it's on. Fixed! She just has to run it like that. <laughs> uh, well, shit. I mean, I like happy endings. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> shut up, Phil. But uh, if you're gonna keep all the same hardware then, just pick a case. Let's go find a case. We'll be right back. Okay, so this is the new case we're gonna put in there. Oh, it has the bottom fans and the front fans already. Nice. I forgot about that. Um, cool, so this is the, the Lee and Lee Landcool 217. Um, said you were already looking at this case. It's like the birch colored wood on the white, which looks really nice. The black has more of a walnut, like a darker wood color. Um, I guess it would go well with the white cables and stuff. Since she already had a white case, we're kind of sticking with that. Less than for you, since he shattered the side panel. It's got a little push tab right here, but some of these mushroom tabs are really tight. I will always like push on that, but then on the opposite side with even pressure. Otherwise, if one corner pops out and you twist it, shatters the glass. And I bet you're still cleaning shards. <laughs> We've never broken glass with not being on purpose around here. So there's that. Okay, so we got two Reverse blade fans on the bottom, which will blow cool air right up to the 3080 that she's got. Okay, we're not using BTF for anything, so who cares about these, but they're there. GPU support. Uh, all right, so this is gonna be a pretty basic build. We'll just sort of do a pit stop montage, I guess, not a full blown one. I'll be honest, I was, I was trying to do a troubleshooting video. I'm happy everything's working and not broken, but it just kind of stinks now that we don't know what it was that was actually causing it not to post. Okay, so in the middle of the process, he was like, wait, I think we will go ahead and just do an upgrade. So now we're doing 9800X3D and I have an X670E uh, Crosshair Hero board that I am not using. So we'll go and throw that in there. Now was the time to decide before the parts start going in, which is nice. So 9800X3D, gonna have to do 32 gigs of RAM. So going from 64 down to 32, but 32 gigs of DDR5 is gonna be plenty. The power supply can install this way, or it can install traditional. We are going to install it the traditional way. Just know by doing that, that's now not gonna be attached to anything. So you're gonna have two now. Because if you turn it sideways, right, you need to be able to plug that in. So then the extension cable, which is right here, right, plugs into it. But because this is such a long power supply, it doesn't leave a whole lot of room right here for the cable management, like, or the cables to make the turn. So I'm just gonna go with the standard layout to make it a little bit, uh, I think, easier. Their system specs are going from an 11700K with 64 gigs of DDR4 to a 9800X3D with 32 gigs of DDR5. But it's gonna be faster in many ways, so cool. So I'm fairly certain this board is gonna need a BIOS update because I've had this board longer than the 9800X3D came out. Fortunately, BIOS flashback is a thing. Uh, yep, BIOS flashback there. So I'm gonna take it back over here to the test rig, plug it all in right here, and then just do the BIOS update, make sure everything posts and works out of the case before putting it back in. That's always a good best practice. And uh, then we know there's no surprises once it's all in there. Okay, so 
absolutely positive it's not gonna post. There it is right there. It just goes to zero D with a yellow light. This is CPU initialization. The motherboard's like, I do not recognize this CPU. So we're gonna go ahead and do the BIOS flashback, which is the best thing that's ever been invented and pretty much every motherboard has them these days. Even the cheaper boards are starting to come with them. So you can see right here this white line around this and it says BIOS. You have to take a USB stick, can't be too big, it's like a shrubbery. Not too large, not too expensive, right? So, <laughs> okay, anyway, some holy grail stuff going there. So um, it has to be formatted and it has to have a BIOS file on here that's been renamed. Now, if you download the, from Asus anyway, every board manufacturer is a little different. Uh, you download Asus uh, BIOS for the board. It also comes with a renamer file. You run that file, it'll rename uh, the BIOS to what the BIOS flashback utility is looking for. The cool thing about this, is you don't even have to have a CPU installed or a RAM or anything. Just the motherboard with the CPU headers are technically all you need plugged in. Um, I always plug everything in for good measure, but I put the BIOS flashback disk into the BIOS labeled um, flashback slot. There, hold it for three seconds. There's a flash, third flash, fourth flash. Fifth flash, cool. So it's gonna keep flashing now, and it's gonna go faster now. So you get five normal flashes and then faster flashing sequence after that. When this goes solid, that is when it's done doing the BIOS flashback. Now the cool thing about this is if I really wanted to demonstrate how cool the BIOS flashback is, I could power interrupt it right now in the middle of it flashing the board, and then just do it again. So this is really neat because so many new CPUs have come out since boards are launched and more boards are supporting more generations now. You're it's very likely to get a motherboard that doesn't recognize a newer CPU. In this instance, X670 was 7000 series AMD, or the first generation of AM5. We put a second gen AM5 in here, which means now we have to do this so the motherboard recognizes it. So once it's done and this goes solid, it could take about five minutes. Uh, then we can just take that out, do a, uh, our, our post, and then we should see code 15 memory training, and then we should get, end up getting video. So we're just gonna wait and be patient until that is done flash flashing. All right, so it's been about five minutes. The light just turned off. So in this instance, it doesn't go solid, it turns off. I can unplug that. Let's just plug in my keyboard. And look at that, now it's progressing to 15 and doing memory training now. So simple, works. Boom, but it's not done updating. So there's still some update that has to take place after the fact. This is kind of like the ME portion of installing on an Intel board. Um, yeah, so. Now it says don't turn off the system or anything. You might have a boot failure. If I did, I would just have to do the flashback again. So if your cat steps on your power strip or whatever. So now let's we'll wait for this process and we'll get back to the build. It's all put together. Uh, so for the cooler, I ended up using the, what is that, the Symphony 360 from Antec. Because I went with white to kind of match. I don't know why they have one set of cables that has black and white. Probably because they realized they needed three and then they got that from a separate kit, I'm not sure. Uh, 217 is nice though, lots of airflow. Two, 280 millimeter in intake in the front. I think it's 280, I don't think it's 180. Could be 180, I'm not sure. Two reverse blades on the bottom blowing directly up in the GPU. Their previous case, they had it vertical mounted against the glass. So it's gonna feel like a GPU upgrade because this will stop throttling down to a 3060 speed and it will actually run at 3080 Ti now. And then we have our exhaust in the back and then we have our uh, RGB fans on the top. So we should get a good amount of light coming through with that even though these fans aren't RGB. But let's see if it posts. Yeah, there we go, blue light, yay! I wish I still know, knew what happened. We still think honestly it was the other, it was the case. They might've been grounding out against something. But here's the thing, he said he'll bring another PC over because apparently that PC build is a twin to another PC build that was built exactly the same way with like two of every part. And that PC is also shutting itself down and doing all kinds of weirdness. So maybe we'll get to, exp unless it's gonna come here and start working fine too. Um, I'm curious right now, let's see if it'll get devices ready. It should, it was already on Windows 11. 
We're switching from an older Intel to an AMD. BIOS update, already updated all of the sub-levels of the BIOS as you saw, kind of like in my previous video how I showed when I switched back to Intel. I couldn't get Windows to not blue screen until I updated the management engine for the BIOS and then once we did that everything worked fine. I expect this to work perfectly fine as well. Had to make sure none of these cables were hitting anything because we have this fan right here. And then I have the support bracket for the GPU, make sure that wasn't touching the GPU fan or anything. This is exactly what was happening last time where I was getting just a, a black screen. Oh, it's reposting, that's right. So this is what happened with my Intel. It would go into Windows and just give me a black screen which would look like it was a driver issue for the GPU. And then it would boot into safe mode and work fine. But I don't expect that to be the issue here. I think it's gonna work just fine. This GPU is gonna run so cold now. Hey, look at that. Dang, is it already really the 29th? Okay. <laughs> all right, well, this one's done. <laughs> nice little upgrade. That was, it probably worked fine all along. They're like, watch, if we bring it to Jay, I bet you we can get some nice parts in there. <laughs> to be fair, he's never done that. But if you guys remember Red Mist, that, that way back in the day, it's, it's him. But this isn't his build, this is his friend's build. All right, that's it. This is not the video I wanted to make today, but I'm happy we can finish the year out with having somebody now have a, an awesome PC and uh, no longer have one that's possessed, although it wasn't acting possessed here. This is some pretty solid backup parts though. So, all right guys, we'll see you in the next one.